All right, well, let's do some first news then. It's fair, accurate, you get the damn truth. Will a miniature poodle named Sage win the Westminster Dog Show? We'll have that at the end of the newscast. (laughs) Mexican citizens among those going to work at a Florida watermelon farm on Tuesday when a bus they were in sideswiped and crashed that killed eight people on board that bus. A tragic automotive accident happened in Ocala, Florida. Highway Patrol arrested the driver of the pickup that crashed into the bus. Trooper said Brian McLean, who is 41, faces eight counts of driving under the influence and manslaughter. No further details released, including what substance allegedly left him impaired at the time of the wreck. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's office said he has postponed all of his foreign visits because of the new Russian offensive now. Zelensky canceled them. They were planned for the next couple days. The head of state instructed his team to reschedule them. Zelensky had been expected to visit Spain and perhaps Portugal this week. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited a drone manufacturing facility in Kiev. Second day of a visit there meant to reassure Ukrainians that you have all the American support you need. On the other hand, he and Joe Biden have been working to reduce support for Israel and their battle against terrorism to wipe out one of the world's worst terrorist organizations, Hamas. With or without Blinken and Biden, they'll do it. Yesterday, though, the Biden administration thought we better come up with something quick because people are getting a little uneasy about them stopping ammunition going to Israel. So they've decided they'll release one billion of it. Not immediately known how soon it would be delivered, would be the first arms shipment to Israel since another arms transferred uh, was put on hold this month by President Joe Biden because he was worried about them going into Rafa and wiping out the terrorists there with so many people. Donald Trump's defense attorneys grilled the star witness in the non-disclosure agreement trial yesterday portraying former attorney Michael Cohn as this media-obsessed liar who was determined to see the president behind bars. Trump, the Republican presidential nominee, uh, he said was the man making the call behind the non-disclosure agreement, which are legal, by the way. Cohen will return to the witness stand today. Cohen was broke, made a living lying, and then went into anti-Trump memorabilia and books in order to make money. He was selling anti-Trump t-shirts. In fact, yesterday during the trial, even told the jurors that he could get them an anti Trump t-shirt if they would like one. They are tearing this guy apart. That case should already be closed and over. Voters in Maryland advanced strong Senate contenders there and in West Virginia that will give the GOP a big boost in the push to claim control of Congress. Former Republican Governor Larry Hogan claimed the Republican nomination and what will be a marquee race in Maryland against Angela Alsobrooks. We'll see what happens there. Another popular Republican governor, Jim Justice, he won their Senate nomination in the deep red West Virginia area, becoming the overwhelming favorite there now to win for the GOP. Investigators probing the March collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore said in a preliminary report, the cargo ship Dolly experienced an electrical blackout 10 hours before it left the port of Baltimore. Then yet again, shortly before it slammed into the bridge that killed the six construction workers. New report out by the NTSB provides the most detailed account yet of that tragedy. The report said the power outage was caused by a crew member mistakenly closing an exhaust damper. That caused the ship's engine to stall. The agency said a full investigation, though, could take at least a year or more before the investigation is concluded. Investigators stopped short of drawing a direct line, though, between those earlier power issues and the blackout that ultimately caused the ship to run into the bridge. Slovakia's government, they're not wasting time on windmills and solar generators. They just approved a plan to build a another nuclear reactor in the country that relies heavily 
on nuclear electricity generation. The new reactor will have an output of 1,200 megawatts. There are two other nuclear plants there already. They get 50% of all the electricity now in Slovakia from nuclear. This will increase it even more. The decision reflects recent nuclear expansion in both Central and Eastern Europe. Poland, Hungary, all have new reactors. Not here. We want to stick wind towers up in the ocean and rely on wind energy. We already told you dozens of red lobsters across the United States on the chopping block. They announced this week that they will close at least 20. Red Lobster has been struggling for some time. Labor cost, cost of the business have gone up. They expanded that all-you-could-eat shrimp deal and customers broke them. (laughs) Broke them! They started in 1968 in Lakeland, Florida. They had 700 locations worldwide. Asian stock markets advanced today. Markets in Hong Kong and Seoul, they're closed for the holidays. U.S. futures and oil prices also gained. On Tuesday, the S&P index was up five-tenths of a point. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up three-tenths of a point. NASDAQ, heavily influenced by technology stocks, jumped eight-tenths of a point. The tech sector has been a driving force for much of the broader market gains this year. Crude oil was up 72 cents, closed at $78.74 a barrel. Questions swirling around our economy right now is inflation. We've seen three months in a row of rising inflation, and that is not good. Wall Street traders and the Fed, they're looking into insight about an estimate that will come out today and whether or not interest rates will go up or down this year, but so far not looking good. Chuck Schumer wants to spend $32 billion again over the next three years to develop artificial intelligence and safeguards around it because of the quickly developing technology. Wants to get the government in on that one too. Justice Department determined that Boeing violated a settlement that allowed the company to avoid criminal prosecution after two deadly crashes involving their MAX aircraft. It's now up to the Justice Department to weigh whether to file charges against Boeing or not. Nannies and housekeepers and home care workers are excluded from many federal workplace protections in the United States. And the private home-based nature of the work means abuse tends to happen behind closed doors. Workers who make less than half of what a typical worker makes are disproportionately women and immigrant women. Even in 11 states with laws on the books that protect them, those often go unenforced. Nannies across the nation are now lobbying lawmakers for better protections and training their peers on how to exercise their rights as babysitters. So we'll see if they get involved with that one. Not much going on in our state today. We are in the midst of a campaign. Today, Governor Gianforte will continue his 56-county tour. The poor governor will be touring the Angvik farm, which is in Medicine Lake. (laughs) traveling to the ends of the earth. He wants to visit all 56 counties. Then he's going to go to a ranch in Wolf Point and visit also the McCone Electric Co-op. Be doing that today as he continues to circle the state. And finally, I know you didn't know this and you've been waiting with bated breath. A miniature poodle named Sage has won the top prize at the Westminster Kennel Club show. Bested six other finalists to claim the best of show award. A German shepherd named Mercedes Mercedes was second. Each stood, strode, and sought to shine before the judge. And 2,500 dogs spanning some 200 different breeds and varieties entered the show. And uh, the judge, one judge, gets to pick. After 45 years uh, of judging, veteran Kaz Hosaka said he will retire. This is his final show. Good. Then we might be able to get a decent dog to win. (laughs) Not these ones that are humiliated and they have special haircuts and they puff up these round balls of hair on their feet and their mm-hmm. head and everything. But poor dogs. I know. They just humiliate these animals. You know? Let's get a lab in there or a, or a Rottweiler or I was something. going for the German Shepherd. German Shepherd. Um, you know, very seldom do these, these kind of dogs win. Striding briskly and proudly around the ring, this poodle gave a great performance for me, according to Hosaka. Others in the final round included Comet, who was the Shih Tzu, who won the big American Kennel Club National Championship last year. Monty, a giant schnauzer. 
He arrived at Westminster as the nation's top-ranked dog and was a finalist last year. Luis, an Afghan hound. Micah, a black cocker spaniel. And Frankie, a colored bull terrier. All in the finals. And uh, three PETA demonstrators were arrested. uh, Animal rights protesters there. They were quickly intercepted by security personnel and uh, removed from the venue. Now, you can chant death to all Jews on our college universities and you can camp there but if you complain about a dog (laughs) they quickly whisked them away Mm -hmm. so i know what i would have done with that german shepherd since he didn't win (laughs) that i got him out of there in a hurry but anyway sage folks is your winner of the top show best of show award last night here in the u.s in sports, I will have to look for the ratings to see uh, how well Caitlin Clark's team did last night that they lost in their season opener. Caitlin had 20 points and 10 turnovers as they were on her pretty steady from the beginning of the game. When she oh, first- can you imagine what she's going to get? No. All year, they're going to get the best in double team. They want to they want to snuff her out. Mm-hmm. And then I watched a little bit of that uh, Las Vegas Aces game uh, before the game because they've won the last two in a row and they're looking to three-peat. And so the coach has everybody sit down and say, Okay, yeah, somebody wants to talk to you. Tom Brady comes walking in, minor uh, minority owner in the team, and tells them what to do. That fired them up, and they went out and won eighty nine to eighty. Uh, I look for them to do very well again this year. Do you? Because they're 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 deep. Mm-hmm. They're starting five are good across the board. So partly sunny skies today, seventy degrees. We were blessed with some rain in the area yesterday, which is good. We have another chance maybe on Friday, a sixty percent chance Friday. A little cooler over the weekend with mid sixties, but that's. That's about average. Next week, we're going to be in the 50s uh, for a while for the highs. So that'll make this uh, moisture last longer. Currently out there this morning, the sun is up and shining brightly. 48 degrees. The 15th of May. Today is uh, Peace Officers Memorial Day. Okay. And uh, we remember all those men in blue and peace officers around the country that gave their life protecting us. That's what's happening. Mark and Paul here together. Thanks for tuning into the cat, listening live on the app. 102.9 on your FM dial.